In today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 spiritual, magical life lessons that I learned from my garden. And I'm going to take you along into my garden and yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so being somebody that is so involved with their spirituality, I feel like I connect with natural things so, so much. I just gravitate more towards natural things. If you guys have been following me on my channel for years and years, and when I started my channel, it was it was my hair journey, um, and I was starting to use more natural things on my hair. That's how my channel started. I was showing you guys how to make natural face masks, natural hair masks, natural ways to make your nails grow, and like it was something that I didn't even realize how it was going to evolve into my life and what my true purpose of being so fascinated with those things, what it truly was, and it led me here. And so now I feel like something led me to gardening. And now I want to share it with you guys. If, you go, if you're on my Patreon, you guys can see more of my garden. I share a lot more over there. Um, you know, if something new blooms or if I get a new fruit or new vegetable or something, I like to just take pictures and show you guys. Um, your energy over there is so, so good, and I just really appreciate it. So shout out to all my Patreons. And if you want to join Patreon, the link is down below. But with that being said, I want to get into the first thing that I learned from my garden. I have my notes here because I wrote everything down. It, this is like a love letter to my garden. This is how I feel. Like I feel so much love right now, and I want to just push all the love to you. Push it all. Because when you have a garden, what I learned is that there's so much abundance of, you know, we'll get into that in, later on in this video, but there's just abundance of leaves, of greenery, of nutrition, uh, of fruit, of vegetable. It's very beautiful. And it, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it because I'm just going to ramble. So the first thing that I wrote here is the first thing that my garden has taught me is patience. Um, and not to give up. Sometimes you keep watering a seed, you keep watering a seed, right? And you don't see it sprouting and then you lose hope or you're just like, oh, I did something wrong or I didn't do it right um, or the seed is bad, like whatever, right? But if you just wait a little bit and you keep watering it, you know, and, and know your seeds too, when, what will sprout? Sometimes some things will take their own time and that's another thing I learned like, you know a Specific plant will take its own time what it needs to nurture itself and crack open and bloom While another one might be quicker or might take longer, you know, everything has its own time uh, But it will bloom, but it will bloom uh, so that's something that I really, really learned from my garden and I really appreciate that lesson because it, this seed could take a little bit longer than this seed, but both will bloom and give the fruit. And it's just, it's such a good life lesson. The second thing that I wrote here is seeds have to crack open. They have to split open underneath the soil in order to bloom and grow. And so I really see that in a lot of us, especially every time that I do a reading and the tower card comes up. The tower card is something where like when that card comes up, then the, the spirits and, you know, the deities that you work with, universe, your higher self even, um, they're just trying to shake things up a little bit so that you can bloom, so that you're not stuck a seed forever, you know? Um... There is this need for us to crack open because sometimes we encase ourselves with such negative emotions, wherever we derived it from, childhood, heartbreak, past, death, grieving, anger, whatever, resentment, whatever, wherever it came from. So we encase ourselves with these things and so we need to crack that open in order for us to bloom because who is going to bloom with rage in their heart? <laughs> It won't happen because that energy will not let it happen. Blooming type of an energy does not have rage energy in it. You get what I'm saying? Like a rose that is blooming, 
is so loving. Like, roses have a higher frequency than... I keep looking over there. I don't know why because um, my tree is right there and the leaves are just, like, moving and it's just very hypnotizing to me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, what was I saying? What was I saying? I completely forgot what I was saying. But that's okay. That's okay, right? That's okay. Um, I feel like... That's another thing, like whenever I'm doing, this is, this is also like intuitive me just kind of talking to as well as reading my notes, but um, another thing that my garden has taught me is like, sometimes you'll be so enthralled in a thought and you, I do this all the time, whenever I get overworked, overstressed, or right after every single reading that I do, personal reading that I do for you guys, I take a walk outside through my garden. Um, it's a habit now, it's a routine. After every reading, I have to. I, it refreshes my mind and it distracts me. Like, I'll be like, ooh, look, a ladybug. Ooh, look, a, a, a pepper. Ooh, look, a new tomato's coming out. And it, it's just very refreshing. Uh, so that just came up. But let's get into the third thing that I wanted to talk about is certain plants and flowers create thorns and hairs as a form of protection. And this is really interesting. So a lot like those of us who build barriers around ourselves, walls around ourselves, thorns around ourselves, defense mechanisms, triggers, anxiety, like these are all like things we don't want those things near us, so we just create our thorns, whatever they are. I feel like whatever um, habits that we develop, eventually our spirits, our spirit guides, our ancestors, and our higher self, if, if those habits don't work for us, then they will push it out of us somehow. Just like how like sometimes if a thorn gets in your body, your body will automatically kind of push it out naturally. Um, and so you will still bloom. This is what I wrote here, is you will still bloom. And there's, but I kind of saw this in a different way, is where the the thorns and the hairs of the roses, and I know there's so much hair on the tomato plant. Oh my God, the tomato plant smells so, so good. I'm obsessed with my tomato plant. If you guys are interested, go to Patreon. I'm going to be uploading a little clip of my tomato plant so you guys can see. I'm very excited. For a lot of plants, their defense mechanism actually becomes like an ally and it helps to protect them and it helps to, you know, uh, keep insects away and predators away and bugs away. So that's another thing that I learned from my garden is like, you know, sometimes it is good to have boundaries up and to have um, protection up, you know, whether it be in the form of a spell, whether it be in the form of protection from your tongue, you don't take shit from anybody. like. Protection comes in way, lots of different kinds of forms. You could do a protection spell on your home, on your finances, on your family, on your relationship. There's lots of ways to protect, but um, what I learned from my garden is to always just make sure that your boundaries are up and that you are protected and you are protecting yourself, your loved ones, and you know, your assets, you know, stuff like that. But another thing that I did right here is we have to be careful that our defense mechanisms don't end up hurting our own self. The like the the thorns are on the rose stem itself, this beautiful rose, and it's stemming down and there's thorns on it. Like we we also have our thorns, right? So we need to be careful that these thorns don't end up hurting ourselves. So the fourth thing that I want to talk about is nursing a plant or a flower or an herb into its bloom. It taught me so much compassion. It taught me so much <clears throat> empathy and it just taught me like just watching something grow from seed to bloom. It's an experience, you guys. And you know how when you get a pet, this might sound weird, but you know how when you get a pet, Every pet has its own personality, right? I really truly feel like every single plant, every single bloom, every single flower, they have their own personality, they have their own thing. Like they're, even though they probably look the exact same to everybody like as you pass by, if you really look at them, they have their own little thing. And it's just very interesting to see 
how these seeds grow and they sprout and they it's right in front of your eyes. It's so exciting. I feel like it gives me uh, curiosity. It gives me excitement. I feel like it makes me feel connected with earth and life. It makes me appreciate life and it makes me see like the lifespan of a seed from seed to bloom. I get to see it and then it will deteriorate and dry or you know die off or a bird will come eat it or something like that. Um, and then you get to see the death of it too. So it teaches you from birth to life to death to the journey in between, the blossoming, the blooming, the fragrance, the seeds it provides. Isn't it interesting? It's kind of like us, right? So the fifth thing I wanted to talk about that I wrote here is I love to garden because it helps me connect with earth energy. I am an air sign. I'm a Libra. So I am very much in my head and sometimes it can get very, very chaotic and when it gets chaotic in your head, when you feel anxiety and frustration, just all up in your thoughts, chaotic thoughts, thoughts going crazy, negative thoughts, whatever it is, you have to ground yourself. So I have to remember to do that a lot because I am very true to the air sign. I get very much in my head so, so much, but you know what? The only thing that helps me is connecting to earth. So stepping in soil, working with dirt, working with like leaves, plants, gardens, um, making fresh tea from fresh herbs, using fresh herbs in cooking, like everything that I could use of earth, I, I will. Like crystals, I have crystals all around me. I don't have my bracelets on right now. Any time that I feel like you feel stress, anxiety, high, high chaotic thoughts, negative thoughts, you know, thoughts spiraling or just upset or negative, sad, angry. These are the times I would highly recommend to go walk around in your garden, just a little walk, like a two minute walk. I do this every day, multiple times a day because I get certain readings sometimes too. I pull your energy too. So I, I get to feel your energy like whatever you're going through sometimes and it's hard sometimes it's a lot I can feel it and so I have to go walk around my garden I'll just do it for two minutes and I do it barefoot and it just helps me just re-ground myself my thoughts are clean and clear and just calm um, I feel like earth energy really does something to me especially if you're an air sign like me Libra um, it will really help because I know you guys are up in your head too, just like me. <laughs> I also read somewhere that soil has serotonin. The smell of, of soil can boost the serotonin in your body. And for me, I have kind of always struggled with low serotonin levels. And serotonin is something that if you don't have enough of it, you can go through depression. Um, so for me, I know that I... I used to be on something for serotonin boosting and then I just did not like it. I, I would never ever take it again. I would never. Uh, it, it was not good. Um, so I started looking up natural healthy ways to boost serotonin in yourself. Soil is one of them. Smelling soil, working with soil, gardening. Another thing is bananas and another thing is pineapples. So I, you know, anytime I feel like my mood is like super upset and I'm going in a downward spiral, <laughs> I will eat bananas and pineapple. I don't know how true this is. I don't know. This is just, I'm just sharing with you guys what I know spiritually, what works for me. Bananas, pineapples, and soil. Uh, and so another thing is just walking around in the dirt, like walking around in your garden, walking around in a park, in trees, near nature. Nature, okay? Um, the sixth thing that I wanted to talk about is growing your own food. So I still cannot believe my tomato plant. I got a tomato from Save Mart and I was like, okay, let me save the seeds. And then I had my partner grow it or he planted it and like he took care of it. He nursed it and watered it and everything. And right now we have 21 tomatoes on that plant. And every time I look at that plant, I'm just amazed. Like I'm amazed. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I don't know what to say. What I wrote here is that there is an intense feeling of satisfaction when you grow your own herbs. You guys, do you know I have not bought like rosemary, I haven't bought sage, I haven't bought peppermint, I haven't bought oregano, 
thyme, tomatoes, um, and peppers for so long because I just get it from my own garden. I don't have a big garden at all. It's a tiny little garden, but oh my God, I don't have to spend money on these things. Cilantro, um, I'm telling you, the satisfaction that comes from it. And, and also like you're saving so much money right now. These things are so expensive. Um, and all it takes is just some water and some soil and you're good. And it's just very rewarding because like working for your own herbs, nurturing it, seeing it grow, and then picking it, smelling it, it's its a whole new experience than just going to the grocery store and just picking it up and buying it because you're in a hurry, because you have to get from work to your house and do this, this, and this. <laughs> I feel like sometimes we need to kind of slow it down and that's what gardening has taught me, just slow it down, appreciate those things that you're eating. Um, I feel like I've learned so much gratitude from my own garden. Now, the seventh thing that I wrote is meditation and reflection. So it's a time where you are still active. So you're watering your plants, you're taking care of it, you're clipping it, you know, you, you're you seeing what it needs, feeding it its nutritional little powders, whatever. Um, but it's a time where you're active, but inside your head, you are actually alone with your thoughts. Um, which is very therapeutic to me. Um, and you get to be alone with your thoughts around these plants and the energies of these plants. You're alone with the rosemary plant, it's going to affect the feminine energy within you. You're alone with the sage plant watering it, it's going to clear your thoughts. These herbs have energy, so it's just so fun. The benefits that these herbs and plants, everything, tomatoes, potatoes, whatever, what, like roses, petunias, whatever, they all have their own essence and they all have their own energy and the benefits that they give you for your inner peace is what I wrote here, for your tranquility and for relaxing effects and for your mental clarity is insane. That's what I wrote. Now, let's get into the eighth thing that I learned from my garden, healing. Taking care of plants is very healing to me. Uh, when you have to water them, you have to trim them, you have to nurture them, you have to give them what they need, you have to see which leaves are dry and which ones you need to pluck off. We see our ability to nurture this thing back to life. And they bless you more than you know. And it also teaches you that sometimes you just gotta let the dead things go. Because if you keep it, it's just gonna, first of all, it looks ugly. And then second, like, you know, it might just affect that tree's ability to produce a new leaf right there, you know? So that taught me a lot too. Now the ninth thing that I learned is trial and error. This is a good one. So practicing getting to know your plants, herbs, and trees is very important to me because the more you get to know them, the more you get to learn about them, you get to see how you're supposed to take care of them. And it makes me feel like every single human being in the world is just like that. Like everybody needs to be taken care of differently. Everybody needs different things. We're not the same. Like somebody that probably has a love for rats wants a rat as a pet, but somebody's probably terrified and grossed out of rats. Like, people are different. I don't know why I use that example, but uh, what else I wrote is seeing where the plants like to live. Like sun, shade, indoors. Do they like more water, less water? You, you have to get to learn about these, just like us humans. You have to get to learn who likes what, what are whose boundaries, like all this stuff, right? how much water everybody needs, how much of this everybody needs, you know, how much soil uh, teaches us to take care of something, which teaches me to take care of myself. And also the people around me, uh, it teaches me that maybe, maybe people around me need to be taken care of in a way that uh, maybe I didn't even realize, you know? And the tenth and last thing that I wanted to talk about is getting rid of the dead. Trimming plants and taking off dead leaves, flowers, branches is just like for us. Uh, we have to let the wilted and the dead and the dull and the dry go. I looked over here because my viewfinder is right there. So I 
just in case if it turned off. Um, the parts that do not serve us and just take our nutrients for nothing. So these are 10 things that I learned from my garden. I want to know what you guys know from your garden. What have you guys learned from your garden? I would love to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to talk to you guys. Everybody that has a garden, talk to me down below. I'm very excited. I love it. It's just provided me so, so much. Maybe that's why I dyed my hair green. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye.